Hello, it's Face to Face again on City TV. My name is Umaru Sanda Amadou. Today on Face to Face, we are evaluating the Akufado presidency for good or for worse. And we are doing this conversation with someone who understands both the ins and outs of government. My guest on Face to Face is Gabi Asari Otre Dakun. Gabi, you're welcome to Face to Face. Thank you, Mar. I like to remember you as a journalist, but uh -huh. I mean, you're also a lawyer. And I'm not sure which one should I refer you to as. Are you a lawyer, a journalist, which one are you? Your friend. <laughs> no, yeah. no, being a friend with you is dangerous. I have to be careful. <laughs> you have so many enemies. I mean, you were doing media, you're also doing yeah. law. It's almost like you left statesman on his own. You were doing law. Yeah. But then now we are hearing that you have something around an evolving F in the uh -huh, language. Yes. Really. Well, I, I've, been, I've been in the media for 30 years. Wow. Yes. So, um, journalist in, in Europe. And then I, I did law as well. But even when I was a statesman, um, I was still doing the law. Yeah, and did a bit of what you're doing now. Gabby's airtime, if you remember. You, you're on radio or TV? On TV, yeah. Okay. I did, I did I'm that. sure I wasn't in Accra then. Yes, yes. Gabby's which, airtime. Which on year TV was that? Three. Maybe around 2003. Ah, I was in yeah. uh, GSS3. Oh, and I did a bit of radio <laughs> as well. Okay. It was licensed to grill on Choice FM for just for a little while. So, so I, I, I've been there for a while. And, um, but uh, you almost moved away from the media, except what you do on social media. Yeah. I mean, you had some people running the states, man, it's still there, all right. Yeah, yeah. But it's almost like you're jumping back in from yeah. the deepest end of the pool, introducing TV. Um, what are you trying to do? I don't know about jumping. Um, like I said, I've, I've, been, I've been in the, in the business of, of, of journalism or media for, for 30 years. Mm. Um, in fact, you know, some men will tell you, um, when City was being set up, you know, we all sort of helped in a while. Okay. Uh, to, to, for a while, okay. in, in a bit. Okay. You know. um, so I've always been there. And, you know, I'm a very good friend of City. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Even though you may consider me a competitor now. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think your relationship with City is like us now. <laughs> the two of you. <laughs> sort of. That, 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 that is the closest. But... Okay, so let me throw this one before we move in. Yeah. GBC's channels have been taken away to be given to Gabby to set up Asasi TV. Is that true? Oh, um, I'm hearing for the first time. Okay. Um, I don't understand this. First of all, the, uh, let me put it on record. ABC Limited, which owns Asasi Radio, has not put in any application for what you call DTT, which is digital terrestrial. terrestrial. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the other transmission? T? Transmission, good. Because that's that's really what the issue is. Yep. And there's no there's no such application. So I, I'm not so sure. I remember. I think the last bit, the last of the lot, were given away uh, the first quarter of, of, of 2017. I think the city was mm, part of mm, that. Mm, mm, you know, mm. So I, I'm not too sure where this is coming the, from. The argument is that the place is choking. Argument from whom? So some no, George, please. some yeah, George. But please, you are talking about some George. That's fine. So yeah, let me just so let me so just so uh, put it put, in that put in, let me put in his mouth. So his MP for Ningo Pram Pram yeah. is a member of the communication committee. He said that yes. um, now the plan is to free up space. That's government's argument to free up yeah. space on the DTT platform. Yeah. Some George's argument is that this platform is being freed to be given to cronies or friends of the government to set up TV channels and he mentioned specifically as I said that's why I'm just putting this to you um, I let me repeat we have not applied for a DTT license okay so I just I just want to make that clear mm -hmm. um, so, uh, really uh, on matters like this I don't think some George should be the one that we should rely on I mean because uh, of course if he had checked he would see that there's no okay. such application okay. Let's proceed. Another thing. Mm -hmm. Is Gabi the de facto prime minister of the Akufado government? That's a word in town. I think you, you started 
by giving credence to propaganda, and you have proceeded by giving credence to another propaganda. Um, is this word in town? And uh, since I have, it's not every day you get the, Gabi to interview. You haven't done media in a long time, so it's just good to throw this at you to see. Yes, what, what, um, it's, it's actually interesting. I, I, I've never even stepped foot in, in the cabinet room. Wow. Uh, I, I, um, I don't get involved with the ins and outs of government, I mean, policy and all that. But, but of course, I mean, I, as you know, I've, as you rightly pointed out, I've been in the governance space for, for a long time. And, and um, I think, you know, first of all, if you remember, before the government, the MPP won, Way back in 2012, I said that I'm not interested in, in political yep, office. Yeah, you did. And after they won in 2016, there were speculations as to which position I was going to take. Or I was going to be given, of course. You can't take, it has to be, you have to be appointed. Um, all manner of speculations. And then eventually when I didn't take any, or I wasn't offered <laughs> any position, or I didn't ask for any mm -hmm. position, um, then they had to create one for me. I think that's, that's what it is. I Which mean. is a de facto one I've just talked about. But I'm saying that it's, they, they had to create something for me because they expected that Akufuadu was going to appoint me. But why? Why should yeah. everybody be thinking of Gabi when it comes well, to the government? I, I think it must be, it must be, we must look at it positively. Um, it must be because perhaps they think I, I merit it. It must be. Okay. I, I, or do you think that you're very powerful? Are you very powerful in this government? Um, I'm not even that powerful in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I have a managing partner. I, don't know. <laughs> okay, so yeah. mm. I, I think, you know, I think I've been arguably influential in, in, the, in the space for, 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 for a long time. Whether when Kufour was in office or, or Mills or Mahama. Or Akufuadu. It just happens that this time the president is someone that I'm known to be very close to, you know, and, and, and I think that's what it is. Mm. You know, mm. Sometimes I look in the mirror and, and I, I don't recognize the person that I'm seeing. You become mm. like, um, in fact, yeah. your initials are GOD. People yeah. like to call you God. I mean, they, they you know, ignore when I, at, when I was at St. Peter's, mm -hmm. you know, I had. Um, I had um, G-O-D, even on my underwear. You, okay. know, you know, when you go into school, they, they, yes, they put yes, your yes, initials yes. and everything. <laughs> and, okay, and, so you have got this mini God. <laughs> now, so people and are saying that... And, well, and then the seniors were so angry, they, they said, you are dog, you know, because they didn't... <laughs> <laughs> so they started with the dark one. <laughs> so dark one should be. But, you see, the thing, the th perhaps what is um, um, lending credence to this claim is yeah. that the opposition is accusing this government so much mm -hmm. of uh, nepotism. Yes. They say that it's an Achim government, an Achim mafia, and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. I could uh, quote for you. Um, it's not necessary. Yeah, I mean, they, <laughs> they have names of people that they have mentioned. In yeah. fact, it said 50 people, Sami Jemfi, National Communications Director, yeah. or officer of the N NDC, yeah. says over 50 people in the government are yeah. close relatives of mm -hmm. Akufado. For yeah. a party that campaigned against Mahama over nepotism for having his mm -hmm. brother in government, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be doing the same thing. Let me start with what you said by calling me a de facto prime minister. And my explanation to that is that perhaps because of the work I've done prior to Akufuado being elected, the expectation was that I was going to be appointed. Mm -hmm. you know, so even when you are not appointed, and, and really between you and I, if I had been offered an appointment, would it have been fair for any Ghanaian to have said his duty in nepotism? Considering you, you, would, you considering, would have merited it. Precisely. Yeah. You know, so I, I, just, I just don't want to look beyond Gabi. But that same argument would have been thrown in the previous administration. No, but I'm just, well, name the person. I think that's what matters. Name the person. Because I am not even on any board. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not on any board. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not an appointment of, not even a parastatal. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing of that sort. Yet, if I had been appointed, they would not have looked at 
what I had done in the past. They would not have looked at my record or my my capacity. They would have simply looked at your, your, your family. I'm, I'm, I'm related to him, you know. And on the list of the 50 or so, I saw Olive. Yeah, <laughs> Olive. I, I could run through, in fact. <laughs> yeah, no, but I saw uh, Nana Bedi Etu's mother. Yes. And you know, Nana Bedi Etu's mother was very unhappy when she saw her picture. Okay. And first of all, she, is no, she has no she's no, I mean, no she's, government. You know, not at all. But she was unhappy because she, she thought the picture they used was not complimentary. <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it good looking? <laughs> or is that her biggest, <laughs> that <was laughs> her biggest problem? I mean, not that she's being accused wrongly. No, no, no. The picture was not beautiful. The picture was not complimentary. Okay, let me bring you a Who few is more. that? Like, can they call uh, me uh, and uh, I give uh, them a better picture? <laughs> so that the tabloid will look nicer. You know, look, these are some names that have been thrown. Now, it's good that I give them. So Kofi Daku Asanti chairs the governing council of Gimpa. Mm -hmm. That's Kofi his Daku. brother. Kofi Daku Asanti would be the father. Okay. Who was, who was, who was the, um, I think the executive secretary, Ibiran Dakufo, the executive secretary of the Energy Commission. Okay. So he's been in the government. So I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay. <laughs> okay. They said um, uh, his mother, which you have already explained, <laughs> then, uh, but says she's head of the presidential no, household and that's nothing. not true. She okay. has absolutely nothing to do okay. with Okay. Asante Bedietu's brother. Yes. Um, Kwesi Kuntu Asante. Yes. Is that someone who is in government? He, he sits on the board of Ghana Hostels. Does he? I don't know. I'm what I sure. do know is that he owns a restaurant and he's been, he was in the business in New York and has a lot of expertise. But I, I, I to be honest with you, okay. I don't even know if he's in. Nana Asante, but Bidouti's sister, Loretta Asante, yeah. is one of the three deputy director generals, yeah. uh, directors general, I beg your pardon, yeah. at SNIT. And you know what I would say? Look at SNIT and look at the gains they have made. You know, you can be specific and even look at where she is. She is in charge of operations. In terms of increasing the, the number of people who actually pay SNIT mm -hmm. contributions and the rest of it. You know, so, you know, it's the same argument with the size of the government. You know, you can, you can make a strong case and say, the size of the government is huge. But then when you look at, one, you look at the performance, because the president has the discretion to choose the people who can help him execute his program, okay? So he does that. He will face criticism. But he, then you have to look at the performance. You have to look at, I mean, for instance, if you look at last year, Expenditure on goods and services was even below what Parliament approved, approved mm. voted for. Okay? Yet, on compensation, they managed to pay. On capital expenditure, they, they almost met their target. You know, even though revenues were down. Okay? But in terms of the, the, the amount of money that is spent on government, as compared to the benefits that we are getting from government. I think that's what we should look at. Okay, so yeah. we'll get to the economic, uh, the arguments mm -hmm. on the economy, mm -hmm. but let's clear mm -hmm. this. If it is right now and mm -hmm. Kufado to have his family in government, including his daughter, who has been mentioned here, John Krumah, why yeah. is it wrong for John Mahama? Oh, so okay. If no, it's right now, why was it wrong? No, you, you're asking the wrong person. Okay. Because I never spoke against John Mahama's government as cronism. You never go look at all my posts. I had no interest in that. And I had no interest for, for, for a very good reason. I want to look at, as a president, you've been given the mandate, you have the right to choose the people that you think can deliver for you. Are they delivering mm -hmm. or not? Mm -hmm. You know, are they, I mean, if you look, you mentioned a list of 50. And a list of 50 include friends and people you have known. Mm -hmm. now, first of all, I'm not going to appoint my enemies or my opponents into to your be government. into my government. Yeah. That's, 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 that's or reasonable. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, you know, if you are not going to, if you can't appoint your friends, okay, or people that you know, if I say friends, maybe I'm simplifying it. If you can't appoint people that you know can help you deliver, then who can you appoint? But, you know, and I think sometimes society is also unfair to, to my family. And I will say so because it is, it is not uncommon 
for societies to have some families that have historically dedicated a big chunk of, 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 their, of, their, of their lives to serving the public good in public service and the rest of it, okay? And, and it, my family happens to, to, to be that. They fought against even the colonial masters. They were part of it. The big six, you can find about three of them in there, mm -hmm. the Kufuadu's family. Mm -hmm. um, even the opposing Kuma's government, in Kuma's finance minister was, was, was an uncle, mm -hmm. in Kuma's in interior minister. So when you look at it from that point of view, almost every government has had them because it's just... That's, that's what so it's a do. family of politics, and, and so that, you're just reaping the benefits of your forefather. Well, I mean, what your forefather sold over the generations? Is that what you're I, I don't think that's fair. Okay. If you say reaping the benefit, it's like continuing with a tradition, and it's a tradition of public service. Mm -hmm. You know, so reaping the benefit. So my point it's, is that it's, if it's there, not, are, there are over not, 50, not, yeah. so I'm trying to explain. They are not over 50. So I mean, first of all, I mean, I'm right. just saying, even if I, they are. I do not think, I do okay. not think that you can find even regardless of the fact that my granddad had over 100 children. Oh. <laughs> okay. And, <laughs> and, He's been and, working, huh? And educated all of them. Yes, yes. Mm. He was quite prolific in his days. And, and um, educated them. And if you look at it, it's not just politics. It's not just politics. Yeah. I mean, you go to Dr. Susano Freata. There's so many of them, you know, across. You know, so, and even now. They are, you are, we are benefiting from some of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Chapad Noguchi is a cousin. He's never been in politics. But somehow, this is Ampofo, Professor Ampofo. Okay? But somehow, his job has brought him into the public domain. Okay. You know, was he appointed by the president? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. Gabi does not run the government. Gabi doesn't call ministers and say, hey, do this or do that. Sign this deal or don't what? sign that. It doesn't happen. Why would I do that? This is face to face on City TV. My guest is Gabi Asario Chudaku. In the year that the NDC chose John Mahama as its flag bearer for 2020, mm -hmm. the same day Nigerians were doing the same for the opposition party. Mm -hmm. And then you said on a mm -hmm. social media post, which you like to do a lot lately, mm -hmm. that the story in 2020 is not likely to be the same as in Nigeria. It will be a straight contest between his own recent record as a new person who has been elected, then John Mahama, mm -hmm. when he had the chance to perform, and what his successor has done, that is Akufado. What are the records looking like? Well, I think, I think the president himself said it when he was um, acclaimed as, as the 2020 candidate for the MPP, that arguably this will be the easiest election for the Ghanaian voter to make a choice, an informed choice. And I think, so that's, that's where I think the focus mm -hmm. must be. It's, it is arguably the easiest in a sense that you have a candidate who just lost the last election, okay, who had four years and some change as president. Three months. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, and then his successor. You know, and this is the third time they will be meeting. Okay? 2012, of course, John Mahama was declared a winner. You know, it, was, it was disputed, but it went that way after the court spoke. So it is, you can look at, so it is not about what I promise you, the voter, as a candidate. Okay? Because the promise must be measured vis-a-vis -vis the past persons against what I did when I was given the opportunity to serve. You know, so if Akufuaru comes today and he says that um, he would deliver maybe um, free whatever, you will find out what did he promise and was he able to deliver that. If John Mahama comes today to tell us that he will manage the economy better, I will ask him some very serious questions, you know, because he, he inherited an oil-rich economy, okay? And within a matter of two years, he has sent us running to the IMF for rescue. You know, so there are, there are issues that... So you let me understand you. So yeah. you are you're going to be asking questions based on what you plan to do 
compared to what you have you did when you were giving the and, and I think, against, I think, so I think, you're not going to use think, manifesto to I think, say okay I think, no you see manifesto are intentions mm -hmm. you had a manifesto in 2012 it's a pledge to the people it's almost yes. like a the, but it's an intention you know you can't it's, it's not a um, covenant yes it is mm. but you can't take me to court because i haven't <laughs> have an, have yeah, an, but I'll take you to the ballot box precisely. and say that well you feel. Precisely. Mm. So manifestos are intentions. That this is what I pledge to do. And if you, if you notice, and it cuts across board, whichever democratic country you can look at, uh, when it comes to the election, they don't necessarily even go and, and take every manifesto pledge. Okay, so that's, that's what I'm talking about, intention. Because, but they can see, the country can look at what you, 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 you said you were going to do and then weigh that promise against the challenges, the opportunities, and your delivery. But I thought that your manifesto is yeah. your record book by which you are ticked. Now, if that yeah. is not done, then what's the use of a manifesto no, no, in no. a campaign? Uh, my, my point is that... It's the manifesto is as relevant, particularly when the country has an opportunity to assess the two. So in this context, in okay. So I'm saying, so in this context. So in 2020, manifestos may not matter as much as they did when Mahama Precisely. was coming for the first time. Precisely. That's your point. Or when Akufuad was coming for the first time. I'll come back to you. <laughs> we'll talk more about the economy, what the figures are looking like, how they look like under John Mahama, and how mm. they're looking now, and why that would inform your decision. Gabi Asari Ochidaku is my guest. He has said the alternative is scary. I will test that when we come back. You're welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. I am Omaru Sandama. My guest is Gabi Asari Ochidaku. He has refused to let me describe him by what people describe him on the street, so I will not call him. I'll just say lawyer and journalist. Let's talk about the economy. You're talking about testing records or comparing them. The World Bank projected that the economy of 2017 will be growing by 8%. This is the foundation that John Mahama left behind. When he was leaving, he had solved the perennial doomsaw problem. You may argue that he created it, but he solved it permanently. The economy of Ghana was rated among the fastest growing economies in Africa. These are some of the things he left, and I could read a few more. What has Akufuado done which surpasses what he did, what John Muhammad Let did. me just take just the two <coughs> indicators he used. 2016, that was what he left behind. Mm -hmm. The prediction of the World Bank was based on even a greater expectation in terms of GDP growth for 2016. Mm -hmm. 2016 was 3.4% GDP growth. Mm -hmm. And you know what that meant? It was the lowest GDP growth for the whole of the Fourth Republic. In fact, the last time we got 3.3 was in 1990. Okay? All right? So that's, that's the basis that you should look at. So what the World Bank predicted was based on even a higher expectation in terms of what Mahama could have achieved in 2016. You talk about Dumso. He had not solved Dumso. And I explained to you, Doomso was not based on the absence of capacity. Go and read his 2013 State of the Nation address. He had already said what we had. And even today, our capacity at peak time is what? 2,700 megawatts. Yet we have installed capacity over 5,000 megawatts. And we pay for, for them. Which we intend to sell to the sub-region, what he argued Please, at the time. you cannot... How do you go and contract something that you have to pay where you don't have a buyer? Okay. Is that, is that management? Is that proper economic management? That we've spent over $4 billion paying for electricity, part of it that we don't use. We raised $3 billion in February, just before COVID kicked in. $1 billion of the $3 billion, okay, was used about half of that use in restructuring and paying of some bad contracts that, that this, this government inherited. So it was said way back in 20, we had done so for about five years. The argument then for, for some of us was that it was not merely about capacity. It was really the fact that the government was not prepared to pay. And look at the numbers, look at the numbers. What is actually interesting, and I think that's how people should gauge 
governments. I will show you some statistics which you may, you may find interesting. Electricity is expensive, so you have to pay for it. Okay? 2010, they increased our tariffs 89%. 2011, 10%. Election year 2012, we were spared. As soon as the election was over, 78% increase. 2014, 28% increase. 2015, 59% increase. 2016, we were spared. Okay? So we, we endured all these increases whilst we, ha we had the Doomsaw crisis. And the government's response to the Doomsaw crisis were twofold. One, to go and contract more take or pay agreements. As to what motivated that, I don't know. Because you don't go and, and contract over 5,000 megawatts when you, do, you only need half of that. But we have to pay for it. That's one. Okay. Two, they then, we are in crisis. Hairdressers are struggling. Barbers are struggling. Coastal owners are struggling. Hotels are struggling. Businesses are struggling because you have to buy a generator, pay the cost, pay, you know, buy diesel and all that. And government's response was not to cushion, but to add to it, okay? To add to it because you have to then pay. There was a time that some hotels found it more economical to turn on the generator than to, to, to use the national grid. There was a time that hotels would not open. They would send guests to another hotel because to have a capacity of 15% return on a generator, it was too expensive. There was a time in this country, we shouldn't forget, that people were working to pay utility bills. And then what you have? 2017, 0% increase. In 2018, you had 18%, 22% reduction. It's only in 2019 that you had 11.2% increase. But 11.2% is actually half of the increase, you know, the reduction that okay. Ghanaians got in 2018. So all in all, even though inflation has gone up, mm -hmm. even though there have been some depreciation, even though salaries have, have gone up, what you are paying for electric, electricity today Okay, it's far less Lower. than what you were paying on the in capacity issue. Yes. Your party campaign mostly on industrialization, all yes. these district factories. Yes. Does yes. the capacity not come to serve as a foundation for this industrialization that you were promising? Why would you throw away the capacity that it was it's, put in there? It's 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 especially when they also talked about the West African power grid and all of it's that. It's a solid argument, Umar. But let me let me tell you the flaws in that argument. Okay. Okay, you want to industrialize. You want to sell to the to the region, mm -hmm. the West African region. Mm -hmm. There are two things that you do. First of all, you must. There's something they call um, that's the take or pay. When you look at it, it's you you must have an off taker yeah. arrangement. Mm -hmm. If you don't have an off taker arrangement, you still pay. Okay, mm -hmm. then why do you go and you say because you want to industrialize and you haven't actually started the process of industrialization? Okay, and then you go and sign contracts that even if you don't use, you have to pay mm -hmm. the money that you may need to support your industrialization project. You will use it to pay for electricity that you are not using. You can't say that you're going to sell it to, to the region when the, the user fee. It's more than what they pay okay. in the So region. let me tell you the flaw in your arguments Please. too. If you have a challenge Please. with this capacity, it was so much, it was Please. senseless. When yeah. you came in, yes. one deal at least I know you have extended yeah. is a car power ship. Yes, but... If you thought the capacity was too much, why did you extend it by asking the Turkish to bring a bigger vessel and stay for a longer time? Because, one, it was, re it was renegotiated, mm -hmm. okay? where the tariffs came down, okay? And then secondly, because you've already signed, they signed with the ENI, Sankofa, mm -hmm. we were paying for, for the gas. Because, you know, for someone to actually invest, for an entity to invest in gas production, gas is not like crude oil. There must be some optical arrangement, or nobody will come and put billions of dollars trying to, to get the gas off the ground, mm -hmm. okay? So, GMPC had an optical arrangement. 
And as it is now, even GMPC, because of how it was done, GMPC is forfeiting its shares of ENI, the Sankofa gas, so that it can, it can somehow reduce the cost to government. You know, so if you have this, so the, 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 the ship, the car power ship will send there mm -hmm. so that it can make use of the gas that we're already paying Yeah, for. but that would still be excess capacity. It still hovers around the 5,000 uh, uh, installed capacity that you'd be no, having. No, it, it doesn't. Mm. It doesn't really. Because what it is is that you've negotiated tariffs down, what you're paying, okay. and at the same time, you are making use of that gas. If you are a new government yeah. that has found the capacity that was provided useless, mm. how many of these have you sent back? How many of these contracts have you cancelled? You know, you know the, and you should know that you can't just take a pen and cancel contracts. Because at the end of the day, it is important that a country should be seen to respect the sanctity of contracts. It's, that's important. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing is that there have been negotiations, and we are seeing some some progress in there. What, been, what, what percentage yeah. have we benefited? So what percentage have you knocked off since you started this renovation? For instance, there were a lot of, there were a lot of these um, take or pay arrangements mm -hmm. that were supposed to come on stream 20, 2023, 2025, even under Boche Jacos, a lot of them were, mm -hmm. were cancelled. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, some of them had not, were yet to make the necessary investments. So you, you, you find a way to cancel them. Others were, if they were coming on stream, like in 2020, it was renegotiated that they delay the coming on stream. And with the expectation that by that time, capacity would have expanded. You know, so some work has been done, and I know that some work is still being done to, to see how government can make sense. Okay. Of, 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 on of the economy, debts. Yeah. Atto Forsin speaks for the opposition on yeah. finance. He mm -hmm. said... Um, that President Akufado's debt accumulation is almost akin to Ghana's entire public debt since independence. Yeah. He said that the data further reveals, and I'm quoting him now directly, that mm -hmm. Ghana's debt increased from 120 billion in December 2016 to 236 billion. That's over 100 percent. If you go to Bloomberg, Ghana's debt at highest in is four years. 100 percent. Be careful. Let me just read that again. Mm -hmm. The data reveals that Ghana's debt increased from 120 billion in 2016 to 236 that's more 120 yeah 120 to it's 230 not, it's not 100%. that's more that's, Why? that's more than 100 percent really yeah <laughs> 120 yeah. to 230 okay that's almost <laughs> <laughs> that's almost just for four shy now yeah. bloomberg says ghana's debt at highest in four years as revenue undershoots this is a story by moses jawu yeah. and this is sort of corroborating what so you cannot just say it's propaganda and there's more information there if you want to. Well, I mean, you know, facts, facts are interesting. They reveal, if you want, what you want the public to see. But sometimes there are more facts behind. Let me, let me just throw back those facts at you, okay? In 2008, our entire debt stock was 9.7 billion Ghana cities when President Kufour handed over to President Mills. 9.7 billion. By the end of 2012, it has shot up to 35.6 billion. Now that's what? 267%. Okay? From 9.7 billion to 35.6 billion. In 2008? By 2012. Mm -hmm. From 2008 to 2012. By 2016, this is the 20, this is the John Muhammad time, 2012 to 2016. The death stock has shot up from 35.6 billion Ghana cities to 122.2 billion. That's 243.2 percent. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right? So, and this was, at two forcing was what? Deputy? Finance minister. Finance minister at the time. Okay? And... He feels we should, we, should, we should listen to him when he tells us that our death stock today is worse than what it was in the past. <laughs> so look at 20, 2019. Mm -hmm. From 2016 to 2019, if you include the cost of even the banking sector cleanup, our death stock is 
one four point five. I'm sure maybe by now it's, it's gone up. Yeah. Let's even assume, that even the figures that you use. If we go by the, the end of 2019, it was 214.5 billion. That's a 76.1 percent increase. So, so I just want us to understand. Yes, our debt stock will rise, but is the rate at which it's rising that you should focus on? Okay, you had a 267 percent increase from 2008 to 2012. You then had a 243.2 percent increase between 2012 and 2016. And even if you have a hundred percent increase, let's let's go with your flawed mathematics. Mm. If you have, <laughs> if you have, it's, a, it's under calculated mathematics, <laughs> not flawed. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you have a hundred percent mm -hmm. increase, then the person who was responsible as deputy minister of finance. But this is not the end of the records yet, mind you. No, We've not reached no. December. But, but, but I see Agroba... So, so you so think the projections is, look good? Regardless of where we are now mm -hmm. with COVID, mm -hmm. you can safely predict that by the end of this year, mm -hmm. our desktop will not be more than 150% of what it was in 2016. But you see, for a party again, yes. and I know that every government has to borrow, that argument has been made by experts and it's been proven that it ought to be, but you argued strongly against borrowing when Mahama was doing that. No. In the, fact, we the, remember candidate Akufado saying, yeah. Yeah, tisukasu, nainsu, yeah, bre, and we, No, you but see. you see, you see, let's, 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 I know you're trying to play the, the advocatus diablo, but let's, let's also be clear about what the facts are. Mm -hmm. We, every government borrows. Yes, I made that point. In every country. Mm -hmm. Go and look at what is happening in the OECD countries mm -hmm. now. They're borrowing more than their own GDP, if you look at what is happening. Mm -hmm. they, they are borrowing and borrowing and, and printing money. Okay? Why? Because they have to deal with this COVID-19 thing. Mm -hmm. Okay? But it's the quality of borrowing. That's what matters. It's the quality, what you borrow for. You have a situation where just in February, government went for the first time in Africa, managed to to, to borrow in terms of raised bonds with a maturity of 40 years. Never happened in Africa. Okay? And so then, you're celebrating the longevity of a loan we've taken? You have to. And I'll tell you why you have to. Because you are borrowing with a longer period and at a reduced... Yes, yeah, so you're permanently saddled for four no, decades. No, no, no. It's, don't, if you look at it that way, then you, 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 you miss the plot. Okay. What you're doing is that... Because before... You have shorter maturity mm -hmm. and at a higher interest rate. Okay, so within a matter of three, four years, you have to turn around and find money. But this government is borrowing cheaper and then using the money to then what? Get rid of the, the existing debt. It is actually an intelligent way of managing the economy. So smart borrowing. That's what Sir Tekpe said when he was Minister for Finance. It's the same song you're singing now. Yeah, but you can look at where he, what? Where he left. <laughs> where where Let he me was, no, at mm. the rate he was borrowing mm -hmm. and at the rate this government Let me quickly borrowing. dive into agriculture to. before we go. Please, please. One village, one dam. One district, one warehouse. Mm. Peasant farmers say nothing is happening. The one village, one dam, they say it's just dugouts that you have left behind. Mm. Planting for food and jobs. Some success have been recorded by the ministry. Rearing for food and jobs. We don't have much detail on that. Yeah. This are supposed to be supporting the economy, the agriculture sector, what you had planned to do in there. Clearly, after four years, we don't have much to show, do we? But have you been, have you been looking at two things? One, first of all, the, in terms of the, not just the investment in agriculture, because that's absolutely clear. The investment in agriculture is so clear, you can see what is happening Which there. Which are beyond the, beyond the slogans? No, you've seen the investment. They, they went up fourfold within the first two years mm -hmm. of, of the government. Now, if you look at all that, if you look at the investment in agriculture, and then you look at the productivity of our farmers, that shows there's something happening. Okay? Mm -hmm. There was a time in this country we had to even import plantain, and that's just a few years ago. All right. And if you look at it in terms we of... Still, um, we still import meat. We, we still, yes. We have a minister for so, livestock. Deputy, a whole minister of state. So, of so, so we have... But you see, part of the thing, even this warehouse business that they are 
they, they said they were going to do 50 warehouses, mm. One capacity of 10,000 uh, metric tons. They've done, I believe, about 40 or 42. Okay, so there, there are things being done in, 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 in that in the side. In terms, of, in terms of the support for our Greek, it is absolutely clear. The evidence is there on the ground. Okay? Where the it's evidence quite clear. And you know, the fact that, look, you know what would have happened? Because we are a country that we depend a lot on imports. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what would have happened if we didn't invest enough in our Greek to have the sort of harvest we are having under this COVID situation? Those are the things that I think we should be looking at. What, what are the key things that you injure? You keep talking about investments. So what are these investments that you have done that are different from what we've seen in the past? And what is the yield showing? What are the percentage of the yield that shows that indeed you have done better? In what area? What area? So area? In, 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 in harvest, for instance, you've talked about the crops that we have. But, but, you, but, but uh, you should know. No, you should tell me. But, but you should know. It's, the evidence is there. Mm. Where they're having bumper harvest about two, three years in a row. So these are things... From 2017. And we've seen, look, we had a situation where there was even negative growth in okay. the Greek. And you are seeing... It was beyond 3% under Fifi Equity's ministry, if that's what you're talking about. It was not negative. Well, okay. I said we've had situations where, especially in, 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 in certain sectors of, of a Greek, mm -hmm. you had, you had um, what was driving it was, if you take out cocoa, the rest were negative. Okay. You know, what, so that's what I'm talking about. By what time should we mark you? I know we've had this argument on the manifesto. Mark you. I mean, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the government. Not you. I mean, the party <laughs> or in okay. power. So I know we've had a conversation on manifestos already. Yes. But by 2020, yeah. should we say Nanado promised 100 and, or 210 district factories or mm. 210 warehouses he hasn't provided? Should we say he said he was going to provide 500 villages with dams? He hasn't done it. Should we be doing that, or we should say, okay, he has done eighty percent of it, so we celebrate? It's worth I think celebrating. we should do everything. You know, I think, and you know, we should challenge ourselves to do more. Okay. For instance, the one district, one factory concept, mm -hmm. I think is absolutely brilliant, and you can compare it to what we had in the past. You see. It's about alternatives. A lot of the factories have been rebranded and renamed. And the one in my village, for the, instance. There, there were, so far, over 70 factories are up and running. Okay? There, I believe, investment into over 253 or so. I'm not so sure, but over 200 factories, 250 or so. In over 150 districts, out of the 260 districts we have in this country, there's something happening there. So you can clearly see that there is work in progress. Okay. You can talk about, about the, the one village, one down. Mm -hmm. I think the, they targeted 548 um, dams, you know, and per the record, I, I believe that over 400... Only three are, are functioning. When I spoke to the Minister of State in charge of livestock just a week ago, I mean, three are properly completed in Upper West and Northern region. Only three? Well, those that have reached the level of mechanism that they plan to install, what they are said to me. So and that's that, what the Minister said, that only three are... Minister of State. I mean, those okay, that so have reached 100%. So in a sense that... They, but they, there are several others at various they, levels, okay, what he has said. Okay, but, so I just wanted to get that. Okay. Do you think your party promised too much? For instance, there's one that yeah. was even made while in government. Mm -hmm. One chocolate per child per day. That's a Kupado promising school children. It hasn't happened. Oh, really? One chocolate? Okay, that's interesting. One bar of chocolate per one school child per day. Oh, I see. I, I, I never heard of that promise. But okay. it, it is actually a promise that I think we should push it. Because, you know, for two reasons. One, it will help the industry. Two, we need to grow this culture of consuming what and we And three, it's grow. not happening. It hasn't hmm? happened. Many years since it was What's made. That? The promise. That's okay, I'm, I'm hearing for the first time. That's fine. But, uh, but it's, I'll it's, come back it's, and tell uh, you what else you've already heard and ask you to explain. Uh -huh. This is Face to Face uh -huh. on City TV. My guest is Gabi Asairochidaku. My name is Umaru Sanda. But we are comparing the records of John Mahama and Nana Kufado as we go into election 2020. Don't go away. Hello and welcome back to Face to Face. My name is Umaru Sanda Amadou. Gabi is my guest. Gabi, yeah. Mahamas appointees donated 10% of their salary for the construction of chips compounds. Mm. And this actually produced 11 chip compounds, as Graphic reported, in 2017. Mahama left behind Ga East Hospital, which you are using to treat COVID, Shai Osudoku District Hospital, the UGMC, which uh, Minister for Health went to rest, Ridge Hospital, what 
would Akufado be remembered for in the health sector after 2020? After 2020. And, and all these things that you, you, you claim in Mahama left, mm. um, where they started in 2012 and completed before the end of 2016. He takes credit for it? No, no, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pointed question. Okay. Where they started after 2012 and completed before the end of 2016. I don't know. I can speak for the chips company. No, that because, was under no, his administration. Because you're, I, asking, I, you're asking the question, t what will Wakufori be remembered for mm -hmm. after 2020? Mm -hmm. And then what you're using to juxtapose or to compare are things that projects that started before 2012 and most of them were completed after 2016. Mm -hmm. So that's, so I, I'm just, I just want you to okay. understand that. So understand that, that the premise that you used was, was but flawed. But he would take the credit for it, wouldn't he? Eh? He would take the credit Who? for it, Who? Mahama. I'm not disputing that. Good, so it's a credit I'm interested no, in. No, but you are, saying, you are saying something that didn't complete within his four years. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and you are asking me to 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 show you what a Kufuado will be remembered for in the in the health sector. I'll tell you f first of all what happened in terms of you see that health is not just about infrastructure. It's about the fact that when I I go to a hospital, I can be treated, and when I'm treated, I can afford to pay for it. Okay. So you first of all have to look at what happened to the National Health Insurance Scheme itself. That's one. Two, one of the challenges that we have seen as a country is that our health system is extremely weak and we need to strengthen it. This whole idea of, of Agenda 88, what does it tell you? It tells you that there are districts in this country. In fact, they've identified over 101, I believe, there are districts in this country that they don't have hospitals. Yes. <laughs> you know, so I'm just saying. Most of them and created by the, 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 the new region and so on. I mean, the regional hospitals especially. So you're creating six additional regional hospitals, but these are regions you created. So yeah, but there were people living there. Yeah. There were people living there. In that geographical and, area. And we've been creating districts all the time. Mm -hmm. So it tells you that it is work in progress. And, and then you should look at, I think the, the question then will be, what difference would it make if this Agenda 88 is actually seen through? Because it will make a hell of a difference, one huge difference. And let me we also... Have five months to election. Let me also... Let me also you know, I don't, I don't think that Ghanaians expect 88 hospitals to be built between now and December. It will be an, a campaign of records. Physical infrastructure will be pointed to, yes. and they will expect you to but, point but to But I'm, I'm telling you that physical infrastructure... What you are talking about, in fact, it will be a record of eight years of NDC. If you look at what the NDC have been doing mm. in terms of what they are projecting mm. as Muhammad's achievement, mm. it's as if Professor Mills, God bless his soul, never even existed. Okay, so it's an, it's an eight year record against. Of which he was a, a vice president record. in. Of course, okay. of course. So of course. he can I, take that credit, do you? No, I'm just saying, but okay. be always on the lookout, that you are looking at eight years against four years. Okay. And if there were enough hospitals in this country, mm -hmm. and hospitals that when you go with your national health insurance card, you mm -hmm. could be treated, I don't think we'll be having the agenda eight years that we're okay. having. You know, so it's, it's work in progress, but my whole point is, and I will tell you one thing, and mark this on the wall. When Akufuaru starts rolling out the hospitals, you realize that they can be built better and cheaper that's fine than what you you found out. because you see it is not about just putting up infrastructure for the sake of it one are you giving the country value for money because if a kufuado can build for instance a district hospital for under 20 million dollars and mama was building for 40 million dollars or 30 million dollars what does that tell you that sends me to the comment or argument on corruption yeah. Yeah. who has managed corruption better you have sent your auditor general on a leave, 120 leave. days. Don't, don't talk about <laughs> The Akufado government has okay. sent okay. the Auditor General home yeah. 
yes. on compulsory leave in what yeah. has been described by so many people. Yeah. Uh, Occupy Ghana has written against yeah. it legally and yes. all of that morally. Yes. The Vitos Azim is one of the people we hear yeah. from most when it comes to corruption. He said Akufado's mm -hmm. refusal to reverse the Malevo's leave directive a dent on his anti-corruption mm -hmm. crusade. I think, I think first of all, even I, I, look at, I look at what is done rather than the personalities, okay? When this government took office, okay, if you look at the, the expenditure, even on, on the Auditor General, okay, in terms of receipts, and I can show you the numbers. Mm -hmm. For instance, in 2016, 9 million Ghana cities was released for the Auditor General out of a, a budget of 14 million. In 2017, 19 million was released. From 9 million to 19 million. That's, that's, what inv that's the kind of investment that so was made. So you're empowering him. I'm coming. Mm -hmm. 2018, 33 million was released. 2019, 35 million. So when you look at all that, the investment that is made in there, and let me also point something out to you. Do you remember when the MPP took office? They had 11 point, I believe, $8 billion bills that they had to pay. Those bills had gone through all the ministries and had even been approved to be paid at the Ministry of Finance. Okay? The finance minister picked it up and sent it to the Auditor General. And you know what would have happened? The Auditor, Auditor General would have normally, ordinarily, seen it after it had been paid. Mm -hmm. But the finance minister decided that 11.8 billion that I'm supposed to pay, please do an audit of it. Okay. And when they did the audit, about 5.5 billion were questionable. Okay, and out of that, after the six billion that they had to pay, over five billion had been okay. paid. That's so, so you can look at, and you can even take the matter of Shraj itself. The same, the same. Good, issue. but I'm interested you know, so, in them. So, so you've empowered so my, and my invested in him. I don't want to take it personally because I have. If you take it personally, then you you defeat the whole purpose of strengthening institutions. Fine. Okay, the personal thing because I will also question the audit, the auditor general, who is on leave, that. Why, how come, with all the stuff that he has to do, okay, your focus has been on coal associates. That could not be the only thing he's focused no, on. No, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. I'm just saying. You mm -hmm. are fighting, because when this government came into office, mm -hmm. Akufuado, from my understanding, said at cabinet that, look, we have work to do. We need to fix the economy. We need to fix what is broken. We have promises that we need to fulfill. Mm -hmm. So... I don't want you, Minister, and of course, the country is also hmm. asking for, for investigations and all that to be done. I don't want you, my ministers, to focus on those things. So I've set up something under the office of the senior minister. It's important I make this point. Okay. Okay? If you find anything that is wrong, pass it on to the senior minister. He will then set up a team to investigate it. And if they find a course to look further into it, it will pass to the various, whether CID, okay. Euroco. Okay. So that was the purpose of it. And then the, the, the senior minister goes ahead to appoint the Crow Associates, some auditors, to support that work. And it was through that work that the 100 million euros um, um, prosecution, the, the one about the fertilizer and the yeah. rest of it, mm -hmm. is through the work of Crow Associates. And then you spend... You, one million dollars and you think for something that the senior minister can never be accused of having any personal benefit you focus on this is that why he was sent home no i'm i'm, I'm saying about his work i know i'm because uh, i'm telling you that i don't like to personalize things okay. i don't think and i have a my, but my, he's my, an embodiment my of the concern, office isn't he my concern mm. my concern is that he seemed to have personalized the issue of coal associates rather than working as partners. Because look, the fight against corruption cannot be fought by the Auditor General. Because I'm saying, if we had left it to the Auditor General alone, okay, the 5.5 billion that was detected would not have been. Would not have happened. So because you know what would have happened? It would have been paid. Yeah. And after that, he would have seen it. Okay. So that's why I want us to wrap up yeah. now by saying that does that justify a decision to send him home in an election year when critics would hold a view that, look, he's going to expose you, so, embarrass so, so, you so at the polls. You are, so you you are, you are making home. a political point. Mm. 
Yep. You are making a rather it, than it runs side by side. Yeah, you are making a political point. It's election year. So if it's election year and then in the wisdom of the president he has to take a decision, please it might not go well for you politically. So hold on to that. If that's the point you're making. But mm -hmm. I think we should look deeper than that. The and I'm saying that I don't want to personal what I do know is that the commitment to fighting corruption is not just about slogans. It's about the investment you make there. It's about institutions that you put in place, whether it's the it's a, it's a right to information, whether it's a special prosecutor, okay. whether the it's putting more General money. The holds the view that you, he was unfairly treated. He says there are so many of appointees course, course, who haven't course. been asked to go and leave. Of he course. has been asked. So then the political part comes to play. But, but my whole point is that, look, if you've been asked to go on leave and you don't want to take leave, you would say you've been, untreated, you've been treated unfairly. We have a few months to election. Yeah. You have always been arguing that the alternative looks scarier. Yeah. You are confident in the Akufado candidate. Why should Ghanaians settle on him in a minute? I think, I think really, one, is about leadership. The contest for 2020 is about leadership. Because, you see, we are the kind of crisis that we are facing now. We've never seen it in the entire history of this country a health cause crisis that has serious economic and social ramifications we've never we've never seen it before okay and you may have some arguments here and there but i think the sort of leadership that we've seen the strong decisive and perhaps more importantly compassionate leadership that we've seen and we are not out of the woods yet and it's important that when you look at especially where we're going as a country by the time we ended 2019, look at what has happened. We've come out of IMF. The roads were being done. Arrears were being paid. You know, we started the year, three billion, cheapest ever we've been able to raise. We ended last year. Return, the, was it the year of the return? Mm -hmm. you know, there are a lot of things that were happening that you could see that the, the country was heading to somewhere. And it got truncated. And of course, the whole world got truncated if you like yeah okay yeah. and since then look at this the kind of leadership that is given there are a lot of people who were saying for instance shut down the schools because kenya and nigeria has done it don't we want to lead so others will say that look it's happening look COVID is here with us we can't base the running of our country our institutions our families our homes on waiting for a vaccine that we don't know to, to ever happen. So it's important that we learn how to live with it and life must go on. And I think that's the kind of leadership that we are seeing. And I believe that when it comes to, I'm hoping people, uh, have you registered? Yes, I have. My, my pinky looks pink. I hope you just registered once. Yeah, I think so. Because you can't register <laughs> twice. Okay, so have, have you registered? That, yes, I have. Okay. Yes, I have. I have. I, and I'm I really said of it. using, but it's okay. Let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to learn so I can sign up. Okay, so to me, the, the key thing is that look, let's register and let's vote. And at the end of the day, there are just two choices John Mahama Akufuadu. You know the two, but just remember that the alternative. It's still scary. You've scared, you've scared Indum out of the race with your comment, but I'll leave it there. This has been Face to Face on City TV. My name is Umaru Sandamad. My guest, Gabi Asari Ochri Dakun. It's been great coming your way. We hope to come back your way next week with another exciting episode of Face to Face. Don't go away. Stay with City TV. It's your world.